This is Lumsark, and in this video we're looking at differentiation and the shapes of functions. So first of all we need to look at the importance of both the first derivative and the second derivative. So firstly the first derivative tells you about the gradient of a function. So when dy over dx is greater than zero, that means that the gradient is greater than zero and it is increasing function, it's an increasing function. But when dy by dx is less than zero, that means that it is a decreasing function because the gradient is also less than zero. And then when dy by dx is equal to zero, it means that the gradient is also zero, which means that it is a stationary point. So the second derivative we can also use, and when it's dy by dx is equal to zero, then we have to use the second derivative to work out if the point is a maximum, which would mean that the curve is concave, and concave is a little bit like this. It has a maximum point up here, and it looks like that. And you can kind of remember it because it does look a little bit like a cave, which is there. Then a convex, and this is when the point is a minimum, looks a little bit like this. We've got a minimum point there, and that is a convex curve. But then if dy by dx is equal to zero, and then d2y over dx squared, which is the second derivative, is less than zero, then the point is a maximum, which we have here, and that means that the curve is concave. However, if dy by dx is equal to zero, and then d2y over dx squared is more than zero, that means that the point is a minimum, as we have here, and the curve is convex. So now it's good to look at a few questions. So we have two questions here, and the first one says that show that the graph of a quartic function y is equal to x to the 4 plus 8x cubed plus 25x squared minus 5x plus 10 is convex for all values of x. So in other words, we have to show that d2y over dx squared is more than 0 for all values of x. So this means that what we're going to have to do is work out what d2y over dx squared is. Start off, we'll just do dy over dx. And that is going to be equal to 4x cubed. Now, if you don't understand how to do this, then watch my video about how to differentiate things, as that gives a good explanation of how you do differentiation. But it goes to 4x cubed plus 24x squared plus 50x. And then minus 5. So differentiate this again will give us d2y over dx squared. And that is going to be therefore equal to 12x squared plus 48x plus 50. Now we have to show that this is going to be more than 0 for all x. And if we were to sub x as in, that would show it, but that is not, we have to do it algebraically. So to do this, we're going to have to complete the square. So first of all, in order to do that, we'll just take a 12 out. That means that we're going to get x squared and then plus, and then we have a 4 there. So 4x. And then we just got our plus 50 there. That means that we're going to have 12 here. This will go to x plus 2 squared. And if you don't have to complete a square, watch my video on it. Then that goes to plus 50. But then what we're going to have here is we have a 2 squared there, which is going to get a 4. That's going to be 12, so then we have 48. The difference between 50 and 48 is going to be 2. So that means that our final answer for this one is going to be 12x plus 2 squared plus 2. And that is going to be, um, that's going to be positive for all values of x because anything squared um, is going to always be positive um, and then the, it's got plus 2 as well. So if it was 0, then it would be um, just 2 would be the answer. So that means it is always going to be positive. So then 
Next question we have is show that the graph of a quartic function y is equal to 1 minus 2x minus 10x squared plus 4x cubed minus 4x is concave for all values of x, which means that we have to show that it's less than 0 for all values of x in d2y dx squared. So again, we're looking at dy over dx at the start. dy over dx, that is going to be, um, so the 1 will just go away, which means you get minus 2. And then we have the minus 20x. Then plus 12x squared. And then we're going to have minus 4x cubed. When we're working out d2y, just to make it slightly easier, um, I'm just going to work it out the opposite way around this time. So we'll start off with that minus 4x cubed, and that will give us minus 12x squared. Then we're going to get plus 24x from the 12x squared, and then minus 20. So this time, we're going to be able to take out a minus 12 from it. So that gives us minus 12. And then we're going to have the x squared minus 2x. And then we've got minus 20. Then here we have minus 12. And then we're going to have x minus 1. squared, that's minus 20. So therefore, we've got the difference there, which is going to mean that it's going to be equal to minus 12 x minus 1 squared. Minus 8. And that is going to be less than 0 for all values of x because we have that minus 12 and then the minus 8 at the end of it. So our final question here re relates to points of inflections. And at a point of inflection, it is always the case that d2y over dx squared is equal to 0. But if that is the case, then further inspection is needed to determine the nature of a point. So for example, we need to work out the gradient to work out if it's an increasing function or a decreasing function. But this question says that the curve y equals x to the 4 minus 2x cubed minus 12x squared has two points of inflection. So find the equation of the line that passes through both. So first of all, we need to work out the x values of these points of inflection. So that means that we're going to have to work out what d2y over dx squared is. So this time we're going to start off again with the dy over dx, as that is the first step to be able to work that out. And that will go to 4x cubed minus 6x squared and then minus 24x. Then we just need to put that in and differentiate it once again to get d2y over dx squared. That will therefore be equal to 12x squared minus 12x minus 24, which is equal to x squared minus x and then minus 2 and that's just dividing everything by 12 so therefore as we know that the um, point uh, at a point of inflection it's always the case that d2y over dx squared is equal to 0 we know that x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 0 so therefore x is equal to 2 and x is equal to minus 1. 
Then we can sub this in back to, into the front and we can work out the y values. So for example, if we have two here and we sub it back into the original curve, that means that what we've got is y is equal to minus 48. Then if we have it minus one, we can find out that y is equal to minus nine. So therefore our points are now 248 to minus 48 and our other point is minus 1 and minus 9. So now we've got this point we need to work out what the equation of the line is that passes through both. So in order to do this we're going to find out the gradient by doing the change in y over the change in x. So the change in y, which we're going to say delta y over delta x, and that is equal to minus 39. And then the change in x over 3. That is equal to minus 13. So therefore, we have y is equal to minus 13x plus c. Now to work out what c is, we just need to sub in any of these, and for the purposes, we'll sub it into this one as it looks slightly easier numbers. So therefore we have minus nine is equal to minus 13 times minus one. And then plus C, that means that we can find out that C is equal to minus 22. So therefore, the equation is equal to Y is equal to minus 13 X minus 22. And that is how we answer that question, starting off with the knowledge of a point of inflection. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.